let's say we're studying a very small and oversimplified country that only sells only sells apples and we measure the gdp in year 1 in gdp in year 1 and we measure that gdp as $1000 and all of that is due to apples and we also know that the price of apples in year 1 was were 50 cents a pound so i'll write it as 50 50 cents per pound and let's say that we are now uh, year 1 has gone by and even year 2 has gone by and we're able to measure the gdp in year 2 so gdp in year 2 is $1,200, and the price of apples in year two, let's just say it is 55 cents a pound. 50, 55 cents a pound, 55 cents a pound. So my question to you is, GDP, the whole point of measuring GDP is measuring the, pro the productivity of a country. I mean, we're measuring in terms of dollars, but we care more about just the dollar amount. We really care is, was this country more productive? And if it was more productive, how much more productive was it? And if we just look at these GDP numbers right over here, this $1,000 versus this $1,200, it gives you the sense that, well, at least if you just look at the numbers, $1,200 is 20% larger than $1,000. So if you just look at those numbers right over there, it looks like the GDP grew by 20%. But is that an accurate representation of the productivity of this country? Did it actually produce 20% more goods? And a big clue is looking at this price here. Because some of this GDP actually might have increased just due to price. But that doesn't actually make the, the country more productive. The quantity, the extra quantity of apples that the country produces is actually what adds to the total productivity. One way to think about it, let me draw a little diagram over here. Let me draw a little diagram. On this axis, I'll do quantity. On this axis, I will do price. And P1, so if I want to figure out the GDP in year one, I would have the price of apples in year one, that's the only good or service, just to simplify things, times the quantity of apples in year one. And then this right over here, the area of this green rectangle would be GDP in year one. GDP in year one. And then GDP in year two would be the price in year two. So we're going to go from 50 cents to 55 cents. The price in year two times the quantity in year two. We'll assume some growth has occurred, times the quantity in year two. And so GDP in year two would be this in the area of this entire rectangle. And if we want to find the difference between GDP in year two and GDP in year one, it would be the difference in area. So it would be what I am shading in in blue right over here. And based on the numbers that we went over right over here, the area that I'm shading in in blue, so the difference between GDP in year two and GDP in year one, the area I'm shading in blue, would be, would be this 200, the 200 increment. That would be the, so this area right over here would be that 200. Now, when you look at it over here, you see that that 200, some of it is due to an increase in quantity. Some of it is due to an increase in quantity. But a lot of it is also due to an increase in price. So if we really wanted to f figure out how much more productive the, quanti the, the country got, and we still want to measure GDP in dollars, maybe we can take a measure of GDP that measures year two's GDP, but it does it in year one's prices. So if we could somehow multiply, if we could multiply year two's quantity by year one's prices, then we would get this rectangle right over here. We would get this rectangle right over here. And then the difference between that and year one would give us the incremental GDP in year one prices due to quantity. And that's what we care about. We care about total productivity. When we're thinking about GDP, we want to say how much more productive did the country get? So let's try to do it with these numbers, with these numbers right over here. So we can figure out quantity two. We can figure out the quantity in year two just by dividing the GDP by the price. Just by dividing this area of the entire blue rectangle and dividing it by the price, that'll give us the quantity. So if we divide 1,200 divided by 55 cents, let me get my calculator out. So if I do, if I do 1,200, divided by 55 cents. This is my quantity of apples and pounds in year two. And I'll just round it, 2182. So this is 2182. So the quantity in year two is 2182 pounds. 
2182 pounds. And then I could, so this is equal to that. And then I could multiply this times the price. So this is this quantity, it's 2,182 pounds. And then I could multiply it times the price in year one, in year one's price. So I'm going to multiply it times P1 is equal to 50 cents a pound. 50 cents per pound. And this will give me, so let me just get my calculator. I should be able to do that one in my head, but let's see, 0.5. And I get 1090, I'll, I'll just say 10, I'll round it to 1091. So this is equal to 1091. And this is an interesting number. So this is, you could view this as year, year two's GDP, G, GDP in year, or adjusted for, all right, adjusted for, adjusted for prices or adjusted for price increases or you could say in year 1 prices in year 1 prices and what's useful about this is this says look if prices had remained constant this is how what our gdp would have gotten to if prices did not increase our gdp would have gotten to this 1091 1091 is this area that i drew in pink here and so now you could say if prices were held constant the growth in gdp the growth in GDP would have been $91, not $200. So this this area right over here that I'm actually let me do it in a color, let me do it in orange maybe. This area right over here, the actual growth if prices were held constant would have been $91. We would have gone from $1000 of GDP to $1091. So this right over here, that area is $91 of and we could even call it real growth real growth. It really measures the productivity. Now this gives us an interesting, I guess, set of ideas. One idea is to just measure your GDP in the current year's dollars. So this was GDP measured in year two's dollars. It was year two GDP measured in year two dollars, year two prices. So we could call that year two's nominal G GDP. Nominal GDP, nominal, in name. So it's GDP in name in that year's prices. But this right over here, where we measured year two's GDP in some base year's prices, so it allows a real comparison of, of how much did our productivity actually increase. Our productivity actually increased by 9%. We produced 9% more apples. This we call real GDP. Real, real GDP. Because it gives you a measure of real productivity. It tries to take out price increases. What we'll see in the future, or we might not do it in an introductory course, but in practice, it's kind of hard to really measure what the absolute, you know, if you wait every day, this was a simple economy where we only had where we only had one product. But if you have many, many, many products, actually, you know, gazillions of products in a real economy and the prices are adjusting and their quantities are adjusting, it's not so easy to figure out how to adjust for price. But the, the, the folks running the national income accounts do try to do this. So they get a sense of how much was the actual real growth.